Welcome to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, where we have double the inspiration and double the information. I am Alexis V. Wolf. This is my friend Sandy Renner, and you're listening to the Fiery Sword uh, Radio Broadcast. Mm. Yes, and you can find me at sandyrenner.net, and that's it. And I'm at www.thefierysword.com. So, well, let's pick up where we left off last week, Sandy. I think we ended with talking about understanding how much we've been forgiven because mm-hmm. it is paramount to first see our own sin nature for what it is. Yes. Because when we don't see how much we needed the blood of Christ Jesus, just as much as that vile offender, that person who has offended us or hurt us or raped us or mocked us or spit on us or called us horrible names or whatever they've done to use and abuse us. If we cannot recognize first that we are the lady that washed the feet of Jesus, the one that anointed his head with oil and where he said, uh, the one who has been forgiven much loves much. If Mm -hmm. we cannot wreck it, that woman recognized her own sinful nature where the Sadducees and the Pharisees sat around pointing fingers going, ah, gross, get her out basically in Mm -hmm. layman's terms. Um, If we cannot see ourselves for the nature in which we were born, which requires the same amount of blood of Jesus as anybody else, then we will never be able to walk in true forgiveness. And we've been talking about going back to the beginning and to the beginning of our lives where we have relationships with our parents. That is our first physical relationship, whether it's good or bad. And how do we deal with that? Because if we don't deal with those relationships, we will never be able to go wholly into to a relationship, Absolutely. into a marriage, or really mm-hmm. in a friendship or anything else, because we're we're still broken, and you know we kind of trudge along and go, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, and then eh, we're not so good. So we want we want to delve more into that. Yeah, it's like um, say if you're um, a traveler, you go a lot, you go to different places, and you pack your suitcase, and you go off on a trip, and you come back, and your <laughs> suitcase is filled now with dirty clothes, and then you put your clean clothes on top of that, and you go on mm-hmm. another trip, and a, and you come back from that journey, and you have doubled the dirty clothes. That's kind of the way life is when we don't learn how to properly unpack mm-hmm. our baggage, so to speak, mm-hmm. and we keep carrying baggage. Uh, Alexis and I, neither one, talk a lot about Satan, our enemy, the devil, what do you, re- however you refer mm-hmm. to him, because we don't like to give him the glory Not spot. Ever. But Not the ever. truth is, we have a very real enemy, and he is evil, and he is out to kill and steal <laughs> and destroy us. And he does that a lot through relationships. And uh, I taught this many years ago. One of his greatest tools looks so simple. It's a magnifying glass. He doesn't carry his pitchfork around everywhere, but he has this magnifying glass, and he loves to put it up to our eye Mm -hmm. so we can magnify the problem, magnify Mm -hmm. other people's wrong. And occasionally, he will flip it around so it magnifies how ugly we are. Mm -hmm. And all that does is cause us us fear and anxiety, and we shove all that down, Mm -hmm. and we keep packing that suitcase with more and more baggage. And so every baggage we carry, we carry into the next relationship. When it's broken in childhood, we carry those things. I ministered to a man Sunday morning um, in another state, and he was in his 50s. I never met this man, didn't know anything about him, but he wanted me to pray for him, and I asked, could I place my hand on his chest? And the moment I did, the Holy Spirit began to show me his childhood Mm -hmm. and how he felt so mistreated and abandoned and I said do you want to start forgiving maybe talk about your brothers he began to call his brothers names <laughs> out and say I forgive you I forgive you and the more he did it the more of that past that power of that past was mm-hmm. taken away mm-hmm. and so an we thing. don't want to forgive because we want to hold on because if I forgive you it's almost like I'm saying uh, that never happened to me. Right, right. We are not. And that's into, taking some of they, what they feel like is their identity. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be talking a lot about identities mm-hmm. as well in the coming weeks because we got to find our rightful identity. And yes. But if we only find it in those broken places, we will always be in hiding. We will always be running. We will always be angry and bitter and mm-hmm. frustrated. Mm-hmm. But when you start saying, I can forgive because I was forgiven because of all the great things. And I'll say this. 
a person who dies without Christ, that's horrible to think about. I know. But a person who dies without Christ, when they go to hell, and by the way, God does not send any person that's to hell. Right. He gave his life so he wouldn't have mm-hmm. to put that judgment. But when you don't choose Christ, you will face eternal some, yeah. eternity somewhere, somewhere, heaven or hell. And if you don't know Christ, you're going to hell. And let's just call it what it is. Uh, we and, like plain speech. And you know what? You're not going to go to hell for cussing or murder or adultery, right. all those things are not right, but you're going to go to hell for rejecting mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. period. Now, your level of uh, uh, punishment may determine what, what you did in that life, because we'll, all, we'll yeah. all give an account for our yeah. lives and yeah. the things we said and did. But I want you to understand, God is not out to send you to hell. He is out to redeem you right. and bring you, in, not just save you so you don't go to hell. He wants to empower you with his spirit and his presence. And in order to do that, he's got to deal with your baggage. So let him. Deal with your baggage. You know, I just want to say this real quick. My friend, our friend, uh, Jamie Salter, she has, she and her husband Sinclair have four runners for Christ. And Jamie has actually just come out with a book called um, Confessions of an Ex-Codependent. I should have brought it with me. Mm. But that, if you're looking for a book on that, you can listen to us and then go read her book. Her book is all about dealing with that baggage. She has a couple chapters of talking about the bag lady. And so it's it's such a heavy load to carry that past with us everywhere. It gets too heavy for us. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. And you you were talking about how, you know, God does save us from going to hell. And I thank God for eternal salvation. I thank God that he gives us the opportunity to humble ourselves and receive his forgiveness. But man, you know, the, um, Paul, not Paul, Peter talks about being saved from this perverse generation. Yes. He talks about being saved from ourselves. Yes. And that is so poignant because I think so many times, and I'm not even blaming the churches because a pastor can only say so much in a given time. And a pastor, especially the bigger the church are, they can't go in and yes. minister one-on-one. And it's people like us that we can come in and kind of fill in those gaps. And yes. so we are gap fillers yes. to say, we need to really get to the heart of the matter. And I think a lot of people carry all of this baggage and they carry this broken it's not because, not just because uh, that has become their identity, and that's a terrible identity, that, yes. that it's not of God, but also because they don't want to release the other person. And you know, when the Bible talks about bless those who curse you, do good to those who do, oh, don't you just... <laughs> I tell you, it's like sometimes oh, yes, Jesus. the flesh wants to reach out and slap some Jesus because I don't want to do good to those who've done harm That's to me. Right. I don't want to extend goodness for evil. Nobody wants to do that. But isn't that what Christ did for us? The yes. best thing any of us could ever do is to get back to this, the Word of God. You like my gigantic Bible. This has four versions and it's super awesome. Um, but we don't. If you don't to... listen to her, she hits you with it. That's right. Bam. <laughs> um, but you know, when we get back to any time, Anytime, 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 uh, I was going to call you Jamie. Sorry. Anytime, Sandy, thank you, um, that we are struggling with forgiveness. We need to get back to who Christ is, what he yes. did, how he did it, and how he did it was through his death. How we do it is through dying to ourselves. Come on. And I will talk about that until the day I die. If he's like, oh, Alexis, I've been listening to your ministry a long time, and you need to stop talking about that, I will always talk about it. You don't have to listen, and that is okay. But dying to ourselves yes. is the key to everything. We must surrender the flesh to says, I don't want to do it. Yes. It's not, can we do it? It's, will we do it? Will Will we forgive? And you know, what's great is that 20 years ago when I came back to Christ and God said, you have to forgive him. You have to first repent of what you did. That's just as wicked as what he did. It may look different. It may have different repercussions, but for whatever your reasons, you still have to repent because you are no different than him. Sin is sin is sin is sin is sin. 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 All sin has different repercussions, but it's all sin. And we all must repent and really repenting is saying, I died to myself. Yes. It's just not, oh, shucks, I'm so sorry, and then turn around and go do the same thing. That's right. It is repentance. It is turning from your wicked ways, and it is returning to Christ, but it is surrender. Surrender means I give up. Oh, yes. I cannot forgive. I cannot love. I cannot mm. be whole outside of Jesus Christ. So we must do as did Christ. Christ laid down his life for the will of the Father. We must lay down our lives for the will of the Father, and it will bring peace. Yes. So many people, Sandy, don't want that peace. 
they don't know what it feels like. They don't like. know what it feels like, so they really don't think it's attainable. When I first got saved as a young woman uh, and a young wife, um, I used to say this jokingly, and I took actual pride in it. I would say, I do my best work in the middle of chaos. And I thought that was an achievement. I mean, I really thought I was getting somewhere with that because I learned to function in mm. chaos growing up. Mm -hmm. And that's all I knew that was, was how to function operation. in chaos. So when I began to have this relationship with Christ and he began to teach me and I asked him one time, what does it really look like to you when we submit ourselves to you? He said, you give up all your rights. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm not sure. Wait, because we have fear. Mm -hmm. Because if I give you all the power, I give Jesus all the power and I relinquish all my rights to him, then what if he hurts me? What if he abandons me? Mm -hmm. Just what like that if, man. Or just that like my mom, mm -hmm. just like my dad. Yeah. What if, and it takes you a while to understand he is not like that. He is never going to leave you, nor forsake you, nor abandon you. Right. But he makes me go through these hard places. He leads me in, beside still waters in the middle of the valley. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. The people who hurt you just took you to the valley, slaughtered you there, and left you <laughs> bleeding. I love but it. It's, that, that is it's such true, a, isn't a it? good depiction of what happens because people slaughter us. But Jesus says, I'm going to take you through that huh. valley of, of decisions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you through that valley of choices. I'm going to take you through that valley, but I'm going to hold your hand. And we're going to mm -hmm. stop and have a picnic by the still waters. Mm -hmm. That's what he does for us. He gives us a reprieve in the middle of our trouble and in the middle of our trying to learn right. to trust him. So giving up all your rights. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the it's Lord freedom. took me. Yes, it really is. <laughs> Which sounds like an oxymoron. Yes. But it is not. It's it, you know, God just kind of does things upside down from us. Yes, he does. But I remember the Lord took me through a two-year process. I'm slow but sure, okay? It took me two years to go through the process of giving up my need to be right. Mm. The Lord says, how mature do you want to be, Sandy? And I thought, well, I'd like to be mature enough to walk on water and not just always trudge through the mud <laughs> like I've been doing. And he said, then you must give up your need to be right. Uh. But what Jesus. about when I am right? Give up your need to be right. Mm -hmm. It's not that the you word don't, doesn't change, right? <laughs> it's not that you don't stand for something, mm -hmm. but you give up your need to always show how right you right. are. And I'm telling you, Alexis, when I finally learned to do it, it took two years to mm -hmm. get that through. I'm, I'm pretty hard headed about some things, uh, but man, when I did, I saw exponential spiritual growth in mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what's going to happen, you know, and it goes, and this is the old adage, I don't even know who the author of this, this um, saying is, but it's, we need to be more concerned with what is right yes. over our rights, because we as human beings must always be shown right. You better know it. And I will argue you into the ground if you don't know that I'm right. Mm -hmm. And that is, we are, that we begin to war against flesh. I mean, we begin to, yeah, we can begin to war against flesh and blood mm -hmm. instead of understanding that we are warring against powers and principalities, because I'm going to fight you to the death saying, yes. if you don't tell me I'm right and you don't hands down say, you're right, Alexis. But that is all the flesh. That is a tool yes. of the enemy to make us think that we're actually holding on to something that we can't even grasp. Yes. Because we don't have rights. We have rights in the kingdom of God. And that right is to surrender to God. That right is to be obedient. That is the right to say you are holy, 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 and worthy is your name in all mm -hmm. the earth. Yes. That is our right. And that is our privilege. And that is our, uh, that is our obedience to God to lay ourselves down. And I'm telling you in 2000, when I finally just said, and I didn't know any of this yet, but I just knew I had to surrender to God. I didn't know the word surrender. I mean, I'd heard it my whole life. I didn't really know what surrender meant. But when I laid myself down because I was exhausted, I exhausted myself to the yes. place where I was wearing myself out from the time I got up in the morning to the time, I, the things I would say, the things I would do, the people with whom I would mm -hmm. hang. I, I was exhausted. Yes. So when I laid myself down because I, and I really, I did, <laughs> it was selfish motives to lay myself yes. down because I was tired. 
Yes. And when I said, Jesus, I need to know you. I don't want to know religion. I don't want to know the world. I want to know who you are. And I would just buckle down with God and said, I'm going to read the scripture until you tell me what it means. And that's what I did for years and years and years. Now it's more of a flow, but I'm saying I buckled down because I did not understand freedom. Yes. I, I was freedom in that I'm not going to hell. That's great. Hallelujah. But wow, there's so much more that we are missing. Yes. And we've said it before, we're missing the power. And it's the obedience to Christ that gives us the authority to use the power. So you can be saved. Christ will indwell you and you have his power, but you don't have any authority if you are choosing to retain your own life. Yes. Because it is truly no longer I who live at Christ who lives in me. It's Christ in me that has the authority to utilize the power he's given me. And we miss that. That's why the body of Christ is so weak and sad and sorry. Yes. I, and believe me, I, I'm preaching from experience. I have been Amen. that sick, sad, and sorry Christian. Yes. And I don't want to be that sick, sad, and sorry Christian. I want you to be forgiving and I want you to be kind. I don't want to be nice. I heard somebody say there's a difference in nice and kind. Nice is something you put on and you make that's yourself. That's the face. Make, that's yeah, that's the, the face. face. But kindness is a character. Yes. Kindness is a character you can of the call Holy Spirit. me every ugly name of the planet and I will be kind to you. That is supernatural. Yes. Forgiveness is supernatural. Forgiving those parents is supernatural. It's laying self down saying, it's not me who can forgive them because I cannot forgive. My flesh is incapable because my, my flesh is right here. Mm -hmm. My flesh is I in look at it box. every day. Yeah, but the Spirit of God is all-encompassing. And the Spirit of God says, I have equipped you. Yes. Not in your strength, but in my strength, that you can forgive because you see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture mm -hmm. is... I have had to be forgiven. I was God's enemy. That is a gripping statement that the Bible tells us that we were an enemy to enemy God. Of God. And God laid down his son's life while I was still a sinner and while I was still his enemy. So that stands to reason that if I have received the same God through his son that forgave me when I was his enemy, who am I not to forgive my enemy before they become my friend? Yes. And that could be parent or anybody else. You know, it's the difference. And I say this a lot. I teach this a lot. You can be pitiful or you can be powerful. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at what that means. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Christian, but I'm woe is me. I'm always broke, busted and disgusted. <laughs> I'm always sick in my body. I, uh, I go to church, I do church, I go to church on Sunday morning, and I look at that pastor, and I say, you got 45 minutes to straighten me out. 45 minutes to straighten out my mess and make me feel good about it, too, while you're at it. And if you want to, you can buy me lunch at Cracker Barrel. Pitiful, that's a pitiful Christian. They can never fight their way out of a wet paper bag, and they stay subject to their flesh always. Mm -hmm. But powerful means you have moved from your fleshly uh, man unto your spirit man, and you begin to give up the need to be right, right in the flesh. And because one, and the main main component that you had to find to cross from being pitiful to powerful is a right identity. Mm -hmm. Because as long as I identify with that little girl who was scared and angry and frustrated and couldn't take up for herself mm -hmm. as a child, if I stay in that identity, I will always respond to every crisis in my life in that identity. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I, you know, and as I grew into adulthood, I began to learn some things about my mother. I began to learn that at five years old, she had to cook a whole meal for her family. And she watched her sister, 12 years old, burn to death at five years Ugh. old. And then at 18 years old, she found herself with a baby boy and being a widow. And then she found herself with another man, and he got her pregnant, and he promised to come back and get her, and he never did. He went off and started a new family. Then I began to see a young woman troubled, a young woman broken, a young woman <laughs> promised many things and abandoned. Then I thought, no wonder she was a crappy mama. And if I don't get a hold of this thing, I don't be a crappy mama. And then I'm going to pass that crappiness on to my daughter, and she's going to be a crappy mama. Yeah. It, it has to stop somewhere, and it stops when you start realizing the broken parents that sought to break right. you, they're broken people. Right. Then you can begin to feel something that's very odd for a pitiful Christian. It's called compassion. <laughs> and when you learn to have compassion, because Christ looked at me one day and said, that Sandy is a mess in the making, but I'm going to use her to speak to nations. 
I'm going to use her to cross the railroad tracks many times to minister to the people Amen. that's left on the other Amen. side. But he had to straighten me out first. And you know what? A lot of good men have tried to straighten me out. I've had a lot of pastors try to straighten me out. Bless their hearts. Bless them, bless them, bless them. They failed miserably. <laughs> but when I submitted myself to Christ and thought, I don't want to be this pitiful Christian anymore. Right. I'm tired of trudging through the mud. Mm -hmm. I want to be the water walking Christian. I want to be able to go in a, to hell with a water pistol and rescue some people. Well, to do that, I got to be rescued myself. Right. So I began to find my identity in what Christ had right. already done for me, mm -hmm. not because I was worthy, because while we were yet sinners. still sinners, he died for us. Mm -hmm. And when I began to take on that identity and I I begin to cross over from pitiful to powerful and I and will purposeful. charge and purposeful. Yeah. I will charge hell for you mm -hmm. with a water pistol. And the water pistol is called Jesus Christ, the living water. And so I will come in and rescue you, not because I'm that good, but because he's that good through me. Amen to that. You know, when you were talking, I was just thinking, and I, I, I teach my children this and I have taught countless people this, whether or not they listen, but the healing really comes one when you look at Christ which is what we've been yes. talking about and by the way for, if you've just tuned in it's Sandy Renner and Alexis Wolf with the Fiery Sword and we are discussing relationships um, and we're kind of loosely talking out of my book um, how to get it right mm. being single married divorced and everything in between although we're barely talking out of it <laughs> but what I think is interesting is when we connect with Christ and we really connect with Christ saying, not my will, but thine be done. Yes. Then he will cause us and we will willingly receive, willingly receive that. We will start to look like you did at your mother. You will start to look at our parents and stop seeing them as those wicked, evil people that did harm to us and say, what happened to them? I have a book called Extinguishing the Inferno of Anger. It came out, I think, like last October 2019. And in that book, it's if you want to hear some personal stuff, there's some personal stuff in that book about me, my mom, my dad, my kids. I mean, there's stuff in there. And I bear my soul because people need to understand it's okay to be angry. Yes. But what do we do in the anger? And I talk about that when I got old enough to say, what happened to my mother? What happened to my dad to make them do this, this, or this, or to make them say or respond? And when we open our heart, and when we open our mind to Jesus, he will open our minds and our hearts to say, let me see you as a person. Yes. What happened to them? To, and then honestly, it, took, it took me on a trail. I mean, I went back to great grandparents. Yes. What possibly could have happened to them Mm -hmm. to make my grandmother this way and my mother this way that caused her to treat me this way and what's made me this way. So I don't pass it down to the next generation. Right. Every generation should be greater than the last. And so I purpose to give my kids a run for their money, but I expect my children to excel in anything I've excelled in. Yes. Because we need to not be intimidated by, oh gosh, well, you know, I don't want my kids to surpass me. It's going to make me look bad. So what? Then rise go, up and give them go, a run for go. their money and yes. then let them train them in the way they should go mm. so that they will learn what it is to be Christ-like. Give them a platform. Give them a standard. Yes. And Christ is that standard. And so I teach my kids. In fact, I'm very honest with my kids about things that I've been through. And, and Michael, well, he's not Anna's honest because he's not as much of a talker as I am. But, That's true. but we he's are not. very <laughs> honest about things we've done in our past. And I remember being pregnant with Sophia and thinking, oh my gosh, okay, one day I'm going to have to face what I did back here because when she's this this over here, she's gonna ask questions. And God, give me the grace to be honest because it's in the truth that people can find growth and healing and strength, hopefully to not make the same mistakes yes. we made. They'll have their own mistakes Absolutely. they can make. But what's interesting is that when I looked back several generations, it gave me mercy for them. My great grandmother, my maternal great grandmother was a horrible, mean, mean, oh. Mean. Mean, mean woman. And I write in Extin uh, Extinguishing the Inferno Ang of Anger, I write about looking back at her history when she was a young girl. And when she was, oh, I'm not going to tell it here. Let, I'm going to stop myself. It's in the book. Um, but what she went through shaped her future. Yes. And then it shaped my grandmother's future and all the brokenness 
and and think you know things don't add and subtract they multiply yes they do they multiply and god wants to come in and divide that not just subtract it god wants to take that curse and make it a blessing if we will face it head on but we it starts with mercy receiving god's mercy in yes. our lives for our mistakes for our sin nature not just the sins but this whole yes. the nature of sin that came from adam so that we can then extend that same mercy so that we can what honor our father and our mother because when we can honor and this is where we started in, I think last week when we honor our father and our mother the way Christ calls us to in a healthy um, godly way not yes. going oh well I guess I just got to act like nothing happened or I got to no, for, no, no. forget it that's, that's not what we're talking thing. about but getting that healing so that we can then see them differently and we honor them with our forgiveness we yes. honor them by saying I'm not going to hold this against you until the day I die yes I want to talk to church people for a minute, just good church people. You're Christians, you're believers, but you have not matured in Christ the way you should. Mm -hmm. We have a young generation that is fatherless, and we're seeing some repercussions of that in this country and other countries. And so I want to address that because uh, Alexis and I both take mentoring very, very seriously. you know, I am grateful now, now, under where I am in Christ. I am grateful for my past. I am grateful for my childhood right. because I would not be who I am today without mm-hmm. those experiences, but they have to become healed experiences. That's the difference. Um, so I, I want to encourage church people to mature up in Christ so that you can be a father or a mother to these this generation. Look, this generation, you cannot shock them. <laughs> no. They have seen it all, mm-hmm. done it all, experienced it all, and created some other things That's to experience. Right. They need godly men and women who are not in self-righteousness but can take them through those muddy waters with some victory. Could I just encourage you to do that today? Yeah, and amen to that. So we're gonna we're gonna call it a day here. Mm-hmm. So um, if, if you've just tuned in, you are listening to the Fiery Sword Radio broadcast with Alexis V. Wolf and Sandy Renner. Um, you can catch it. Um, you can catch us at www.thefirysword.net.com or sandyrenner.net. Yes. Um, and I do want to thank Johnny McElveen. He did our intro and our exit music, and he's amazing. You can catch him at 803-397-4931. He is a producer and a musician. He's amazing. Um, and we're going to come back next week, and we're going to talk more about relationships because that's yes. what we've been talking about for several weeks now because it's very important to understand what the relation looks like in order to be healthy. Yes. Have a great day. Have a great day.